space fans, it's Tarek Malik, editor-in-chief of Space.com. And on this week in space, we got some very cool glimpses into some a pivotal mission for NASA STS-41C with astronaut Terry Hart. That's a mission that set the groundwork for long duration material science in space and satellite servicing. Check it out. Well, you know, one of the things we wanted to talk about was the the mission, right? Terry's Terry's flight in space in mm. 1984, STS-41. Uh, C, of which the most visual part, obviously a, a moving experience for Rod and I was was seeing the mission uh, as it debuted. But uh, in uh, uh, in in the Dream is Alive, actually I have that on on DVD and the and the soundtrack. It's it's amazing. So, but um, I know, right? But 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 I'm, you know, I think that a, a, a lot of folks, a lot of our listeners, and uh, and a lot of young people now, you know, mm -hmm. the the engineers that would design the missions of the future, you know, may not be familiar with, I think, some of the more, I want to say, like, uh, 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 milestone moments of mm -hmm. that mission. So mm -hmm. STS, just as a reminder for mm -hmm. folks, um, uh, it was a mission in 1984. It, it, it deployed uh, the long duration exposure uh, facility, and there was a, a repair of a satellite, the Solar Max satellite, and you were instrumental in both of those things. And <laughs> on and, film, and, on film, yeah. And so, <laughs> so, so, I, you know, I, I want to ask kind of how you approach and train for that mission and where you see it as um, in terms of like the science that and, and operational knowledge that came out of it. But if you can kind of give our listeners a, a synopsis kind of of what the mission like the primary goals were and, yeah. and then we can start from there to, to talk about it yeah at that time um, this was the um, we were the 11th flight of the program um, so uh, we had checked out the man maneuvering unit a couple flights before uh, and we were ready to go now almost two years of training uh, for this because it was the first rendezvous that was one of my duties. I was a, I was a rendezvous officer uh, for Bob Crippen, our commander, of course, and Dick, Scro Dick Scobie, our pilot. Uh, but we were doing the first rendezvous of the program. Uh, we deployed the long duration exposure facility as a NASA Langley uh, uh, experiment, about, about as big as a school bus, actually. Um, and um, it had a hundred and uh, hundred and it had 85 trays on it, 150 scientists from all around the world had contributed these experiments for micrometeorite collection and cosmic rays and all that stuff. It stayed up for six years and then uh, Bonnie Dunbar captured it and brought it back. So that was day two. Then, then we were in the process of doing the rendezvous and we caught up to Solar Max, which had been launched uh, in 1980 on a Delta. Uh, ironically, it was the first satellite that Goddard designed to be repaired by the shuttle. <laughs> it, it about three months after it was on orbit, it uh, actually blew some fuses. It had a thermal hotspot in the attitude control system, and the fuses derated, basically, and they, they lost control of it. So it was spinning uh, slowly, but spinning uh, sort of pointed at the sun to keep its batteries charged. But for for years, you know, it was waiting for us to get there in 1984 then. Uh, so, so all the the stage was set, you know, to do all that, and we had decided uh, to uh, uh, use the man maneuvering unit that, that George Nelson, Pinky, or uh, <laughs> uh, Jim uh, Van Hoft and Ox, you know, so Pinky and Ox were our two spacewalkers. Uh, so uh, they were outside, ready to go. We just finished the rendezvous. I had the arm ready to go, and Pinky was going to dock to the Solar Max stop the rotation and then I could grapple because uh, the grapple fixture was right underneath one of the solar panels. So it was mm -hmm. kind of hard to get at if it was spinning. Mm -hmm. um, and we were all set for that to work and, uh, and Crippen did a beautiful job of bringing the uh, Challenger in like real close. And uh, Pinky flew over and he went to dock and he bounced right off the satellite. <laughs> and, uh, and so what was that? You know, we, no one could figure out why the jaws didn't grab the pin on the satellite. So he did it again. And I think he did it a third time. And each time he hit the satellite, he imparted energy on it. So now the satellite, instead of just spinning slowly, it's tumbling. Oh. <laughs> so, we, so we were beside ourselves not knowing what happened there. So we didn't want to get dangerous. So we brought Pink, uh, uh, Pinky back into the payload bay. And I tried a couple times to get that fixture, but every time I was getting close, I would reach one of the limits of the arm, you know. So, so it was it was a, a real mess, and and uh, mission control didn't have any idea. So we we backed away um, uh, 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 several miles, you know, behind the satellite then, and and, and parked in the same orbit for a day. And then, um, uh, fortunately, the Goddard people had some control. They they had a pro program called B dot, which reacts the torquers against the Earth's magnetic field. 
and they managed to get the energy out of the spinning satellite, the tumbling satellite, and they were fortunate because the batteries were almost dead on it, uh, and it, it stopped finally, and it was pointed roughly at the sun when it stopped. <laughs> so, the, so the batteries recharged, and, and then we still thought about what we had to do. We, well, we were really kind of low on fuel at that point, and uh, Mission Control said, you know, we'll take another shot at it, but uh, you, you can't spend much fuel on this rendezvous because we got to save something to get home. You know, so again, Crippen and Scoby you know, did just such a great job. They, they brought it back in again. And now it was spinning slow enough that I could capture it with a mechanical arm. You know, so when I, when I had it on board, then, um, then Pinky and Ox went back out again the next day and, and did the repair work. You know, so it was quite a uh, good demonstration of um, you know, how our training pays off so much you know, between the crews and, 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 the, uh, and the mission control engineers and Goddard, too. They were, you know, the, it was, everyone was involved. There were hundreds of people trying to to make this work, you know, and, and, we, and we pulled it off, you know, so it was, it was quite a nice accomplishment. Wow. That really is an amazing achievement. Mm -hmm.